Welcome, everybody. I'm Amanda Krugliak. I'm the arts curator at the Institute for the Humanities Gallery at the University of Michigan. This is our first virtual reception. And of course, we dressed up. And we're delighted today to welcome Sydney G. James and celebrate her opening at the Institute of the new exhibition, Watch Me Work, Portraits of Self. It includes eight brand new paintings and a commissioned mural, all made possible with the support of a grant from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. And we're going to share all of that with you in just a moment, but first I want to welcome Sydney G. James. Hello. Hey, you. Thank you for having me. It is, even digitally. <laughs> Let me tell everybody a little bit about you. Sydney G. James is a painter and muralist born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Her practice is responsive about action, repositioning the narrative of black women in society from marginalized to honored and revered, one portrait at a time. Her recent projects include The Girl with the D Earring, a nine story commission mural on the Chroma Building in Detroit that is a modern, modern retake of the Dutch painter Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring. A documentary about the project is included in her IH Gallery exhibition, and we will be premiering that tonight. She is also completing efforts or has completed efforts on the Malice Green mural in Highland Park, a memorial to Green and to the countless other African Americans who have died from police brutality or racism. As is tradition at the Institute Gallery openings, we are going to do an artist conversation, but this time we're gonna do something a little bit different. We want to welcome a special guest. I'd like to welcome now Shahrazad Washington Parish. Hey Shahrazad, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm great. It's great, great to you. see you. <laughs> Let me tell everybody a little bit about you now. Shahrazad Washington Parish is a writer, creative coach and educator, currently teaching at the Grace Lee Boggs School in Detroit. Shahrazad's writing and poetry ranges from personal narrative to formal verse, deconstructing societal, personal, and political concepts of duty and family. Her work has been published in journals and is part of the Detroit Neighborhood Guidebook Anthology as well as in murals and large scale visual artworks. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shahrazad. Thank you for having me. This is one of my now, favorite places to be. <laughs> I know, this is the place to be, right? Um, so if you don't mind, at this moment, I'm gonna join the audience for the talk and I'd like for you two to take it from here. Yay, us. Hey, yay. Hey, you. Congratulations. Thank you. This is the first time we've seen each other since, since I painted Green. the Madeline's Green mural. That's June. I'm going to touch your hands. No. Okay. <laughs> so let's get into it. Watch me work. Watch me work. This is an amazing thing. I've been privy, right? I've been privy to see it in progress and to see the work as it happens. I'm excited to be able to talk to you about it. There's so much um, that seemingly we wouldn't have to talk about because we live it and right. we breathe it and we right. know what it is. But let's talk about it. Watch me work. Tell me about these um, portraits of self. So watch me work was really spawned by, of course, the pandemic, you know, um, because at the beginning of the pandemic, like from March to June, I did nothing, like literally nothing. I sat on my couch, I was grieving, I was coping. I was because this is such a surreal, unreal experience that the world is having, yeah. you know? So then you, I was, I was stuck. I had experienced some personal deaths and you know, a, a sister was in the hospital for two months with COVID. You know, I I was I was stuck. I was creatively stuck. I was just stuck. So I did not leave that couch. But once open season on black people like steadily happened, like back to back to back, it was like just a string, like a 
like three, four straight months, you hearing a story like the Breonna Taylor. Because mm -hmm. that was in February. That was in February. Ahmad. Arbery. No, that was before Breonna. What happened on May? Who was Ahmad, on May? Ahmad uh, Arbery. He was the runner. That's who I was, yeah. Yep. He happened before her. And then, of course, George Floyd. Then Tony McDay. Like, it was so many. Um, and it's crazy. And I actually felt guilty during this process because that's what brought me out of my out of my hole. Such tragedies. And I felt really kind of like a piece of shit. Like, I'm like, because I was erected out of this this very, very dark place by some very, very, some, some even arguably darker shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I addressed it in my, I protested in my way. I put out there a GoFundMe for a Malice Green mural because I read in an article that the first one was destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't want to just do it to tribute to Malice Green. It had to embody all of it. Because why Malice Green? He was in 1992. Right. Why Malice Green is because this is still happening. And we even got a conviction, a half ass conviction it was, but we still got a conviction. And I feel like that kind of set a tone up until Trayvon Martin's death. Right. And then that undid whatever that our conviction did in my brain. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, but after that, that's when it really, that's when the work really started. Mm -hmm. So, um, because of all of the, the trending Black Lives Matter and the trending deaths, Black artists became very, very popular, um, myself included. <laughs> so I got a call to do the Chroma Building Wall. Mm -hmm. um, and even Peter Cummings said, like, um, he said, like, we were going to go in a different direction. But after George Floyd, I couldn't in my right mind stay in the direction we were going. So um, he chose me. I agree because, you know, that's an 8,000 square foot canvas. Any street artist, mural artist in the world would be like, yes. Because I've never done something that big, but um, I'm always up for a challenge. So Watch Me Work came, the title became Watch Me Work because literally from Malice Green to mm -hmm. the girl with the D earring and all these other in-between projects, literally people were watching me work like it was a uh, overwhelming amounts of people watching me work not just watching me intruding on me while we were working wanting to take pictures wanting to interview me like one of and you'll see like you'll see a good expression of this like in the film but i'm like oh my god but it wasn't just watching me work we're watching everybody else's work else's work as well we're watching the essential workers because that wasn't even a, a term last year right right but now we have a term called essential workers when really any type of work is indeed essential mm -hmm. it might not be essential to the public always but it, it's essential to that person there's always essential to but the it's worker. but you know that term is just another way to create a different type of class system Absolutely. you know what i'm saying so but it's like we're watching all of this work and the the common trend was us working black women in particular mm -hmm working against systems, working within systems. So, uh, and, and all of them in my brain are self-portraits. Like, no, I'm not a male lady, but I deliver things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, especially now, since we have, to, we have to play all these roles because we can't just go out and about anymore. Right. We have to, you know, if your mom can't get there, you got to go get it and you got to deliver it to her. So that's where the male lady came. Every, and then uh, now mothers, parents, they have to be teachers and work in home in the same space. And it's all of these intrusions. So I bought a phone. Like, I think my mom has sent me a picture of my sister where she's at work. She's working at the computer and it's my cat. I don't have custody anymore because I left it in the custody of my mom. <laughs> But she's like, jump, she loves my sister. She jumped up in this chair. Like, yeah. don't mind me. Yeah, yeah. And that's where that came from. Because it's always an interruption of some sort. As a mother, <laughs> I appreciate so much that you, um, like you even tell that story. You even give a peek into it. Because we hear about it. We see about it online. You know, but it's usually from 
this this householder that's like right my little co-worker is doing this and that and the third like right. our co-workers are now our children right um but like just to get a, a glimpse into that and what that looks like now yes yeah. it's crazy crazy and so you have mothers you have um one of my favorite pieces is a breastfeeding mother yes right at the computer like, because the baby was born during COVID. So it's one thing. And I'm not a parent. I'm not a mother. I've never birthed any children. But you have to think about it. Like, I was thinking, like, when I was... Because Lex has worked... She helped me work um, on the Malice Green. Um, the, um, it wasn't a job <laughs> at all. The Malice Green piece. Um, mm -hmm. She did some logistical work for me. And I was just thinking, like, damn, you probably breastfeed on Zooms, too, don't you? She's like, yes, girl, because she's a, an event planner. And if you think about it, like, it's different if you're a breastfeeding mom and you go to work every day. That means you can pump and your baby might accept bottles. But if you've literally be, been contained in this space, for some reason, I had the mind, like, that baby probably don't even accept a bottle. I'm definitely going to paint Lex breastfeeding on a Zoom. And then when I actually talked to her about it, she was like, yeah, no, she does not accept bottles. <laughs> Lunchtime. It's lunchtime. In the middle of the meeting. I don't care about your bottle. I don't care about your meeting. I don't care about your meeting. I am. So I titled that piece Nutrition for the Soul because it's not just nutrition for the baby, but we need that type of nutrition just as a whole period because mm -hmm. we're always shaming women about feeding their kids. There is something very um, nutritious about pardoning if you will, the the intrusion, this perceived intrusion. Like you said, the mother was mortified. She was mortified. And when you say, no, it's okay. Yeah. That's your life. It's, it brings so much ease and so much relief, right? Um, I don't know who is watching, who is a parent, who is a mother, um, who is this primary caregiver, but it brings so much ease to the job, right? When you can say, no, it's okay. Hey, little person, how right. you doing? Such and such and such. And like, then they become a part of it. It's chef kiss. <laughs> I swear. I have a question about the um I noticed in some of your in some of the works, there are these, you know, the the emoticons and the emojis that we Oh yeah, so what those is? are the Zoom pieces, the both featuring mothers. Those are what I imagine the reactions to be. Cause I didn't want to give faces to people. I don't Okay. Like I didn't want to even give them bodies. I just wanted to give a, an emotion. Mm -hmm. And that's all an emoji is, is an emotion. How are these people, how do I perceive these people really behave? So, I love it. yeah. I love it. So let's shift to the, um, the, the workers that are not interacting virtually. You have um, a male woman delivered. Yep. yep. And, a and she's delivering a ballot. <laughs> she is delivering a ballot. Because <laughs> even in this in crazy it. ass time, this pandemic, all of that, even them trying to shut that system down people still work i'm people going to work. work people need their mail i'm going to work yeah. i received a, a letter um a card a thank you card from a woman i met through halima she's her aunt who turned 100 this year and i painted a, a i painted her um for and along with halima's daughter and she sent me a letter in the mail mm -hmm. like in the like there is no text message no <laughs> it's the mail and it was in cursive it was in cursive i know Yep, <laughs> it was in cursive. And you have another piece um, of a chef. Oh man, man, that's the one. Well, they all the one, but I call the chef the healer because she's a vegan chef, um, but she also wants to be, she wants to be a healer. She wants to be a holistic just provider. Mm -hmm. And she's actually getting certifications. She even moved to Dallas in a pandemic. And when I tell you, a week after she got there, started thriving. She did. She yeah. set a goal because she's a she's a manifester, and mm -hmm. whatever she and I ain't saying she don't go through bumpy shit to get to where she want to go. Yeah. But she was worth me putting every drop of sweat in those gloves. Like I went in. There was so much, <laughs> so much. And that's the thing too. I think I gave these pieces more attention than I ever get given anything I've ever painted. What's behind that? I don't know. I really just, I don't know. I just, I always work like I have it all to lose. 
And this time, I worked like everybody had it all to lose. That's beautiful. It's beautiful and ugly at the same time, ain't it? Pretty ugly. Is yeah. that what they say? Pretty ugly. It's beautiful. And that's the Detroit in me, too. Because that's what <laughs> Detroit is. It's gritty and it's, it's, you know, it's gritty, it's beautiful. It's... So, you, you mentioned in this work that you do not have any of the, the subjects interacting with the audience. Why? Um, because they're working. They got time for us. They're working. At the same time, because they're there for us to look at, it's almost like they're performing for us. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yep. Because it's not a, I wanted these pieces not to be about the viewer. Kind of, and it's kind of Baroque-like, too. The Baroque yep. period pieces, they didn't interact with the viewer. Mm -hmm. It's all this chaos. It don't have nothing to do with who looking. That's so, it, it is so um, reflective, indicative of where we are, how we are, so like in society and politically, like we are doing things, and it doesn't matter. We could be dying, and people are watching, as literally if it watching is a performance, or you know, as if it is there for their entertainment, and that yeah. is very loaded with with history. It is very loaded, um, yeah, in this in this way, and. I think about the work that women mm. do. Um, I, I think about this work and how women seem to be on these front lines of... Look at yesterday. Summer Woods. I'm <laughs> adding her to this collection. You That's must. the beauty about this, this series. I started off with eight because mm -hmm. that's what I was able to finish for this show. But it planted such a seed in me. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'll be working on this body of work for years. Right. Because yesterday I saw an image of my friend. Yes. Being bombarded by all of these white people yelling negative slurs. All of this crazy stuff trying to inter interfere with the election process. It was police guarding. But no arrests. But no arrests. And there was but a, my friend, a black woman. A black woman. Summer Wood. Came out and... You know, held down the fort and said, "Back off! Hey, but, stop it!" You know. Yeah, I'm and going to pay her. There are. That is I'm my adding her to the to the list. It, it, I would be remit. It, I, it would be. I would fail myself if I, if I didn't plan on adding her. How do you stay? How do you stay cool? Do you stay cool? I'm not cool. How do you all. stay cool when you're painting these things and you are creating these um, amazing testaments to? resilience and you are you know making these beautiful images and you are impacting um viewers how do you i let my anger out first this way <laughs> <laughs> i let loose first because i can't paint while i'm angry i just can't but i have to act out my anger some type of way whether i'm cussing fussing throwing shit whatever it is i gotta let that go so i could put it all in here you know what i mean so that's how, but I'm I'm definitely not cool. I'm not one of those laid back people. I'm I'm a cancer. I'm not a Leo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Leos can be laid back. I'm I'm all over the place. You are a daughter and you know, the auntie and I am the auntie. The new baby mama with the, the COVID baby. Yep, COVID baby, baby COVID baby Yoda. COVID baby Yoda. Um but you you wear these different hats. You wear tons of hats. How do you maintain this um, balance between, you know, being the daughter and having to stay up for 99 hours straight so you can <laughs> kick a show out and be there for, um, be a source of strength for family? You said you had, um, you had a couple deaths and a couple scares. And how do you... Honestly, yeah, I feel like misogyny and patriarchy have prepared me for this moment or all of my moments. Well, ain't it good for something? Uh, because, like, you know, you hear the saying all the time, women got to work twice as hard as men. Well, if you a black woman, you got to work 10 times as hard as everybody. Um, and I've literally been doing that since I was in high school. Maybe not before, um, maybe a little bit before. But, like, the art world is more sexist than racist. 
So if you if it's already racist and then I got a vagina, I have to do by far more work. So and honestly, you know, I have a very supportive mo mother. I have dope friends. I make sure to surround myself with dope friends um, who check on me, all of that stuff. But the reason why I can go so hard is because I honestly and this is honest, um, I have a stronger fear of failure than anything else. Like, that's why I'm able to go 100 feet in the air. How do you do that? I would never. I'm more scared of failing than falling. That's so. That's a moment of transparency. That is the moment. <laughs> I want to move to um, the self-portraits. Um, I don't know, which one do we want to start with and which one do we want to close with? I'll let you. <sighs> so let's start um, with, you are on a lift. You are looking. <laughs> you are looking down upon all the people who said I would never in my mind. I know I am. <laughs> it's real. It is so gravely opposite of the, of the self portrait chest, which yeah. um, to me, like for, from this series, is my favorite piece. Like, ah, oh, it consumes me in everything that I have felt during the entire pandemic. And so talk to me a little bit about just particular like composition, that is the word. Like the boom piece is called um, Articulating Boom Shakalaka. Ha! But I wanted, I saw, I was like, oh, I'm gonna paint myself so strong. Cause I did. But the other, the reality of me is me sitting very, very small on this couch because the composition is not just what I'm doing, it's how I'm positioned. Yeah. Like I did an 8,000 square feet wall and I still felt very small. And often I feel very small. Like, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, you're doing so much amazing. You're always working, <laughs> da, 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 da. and you're super cute. I am, I got freckles. Parents, it will, <laughs> you know. But at the end of the day, the world is still the world. And I feel very, very small in it. I have learned to be very careful in how I encourage uh, my friends, right? And you in particular, right? You'll be like, hey, I got this to do, I got this to do, I got that to do. And because I'm so accustomed to you, like, doing it, like, I joke about it like, oh, you'll have it done in three minutes. And I didn't realize how much pressure that mm -hmm. has to be. Um, and adding to this, like, anxiety <laughs> and failure. I'm so sorry. It's, it was such a compliment. However, what I will say is this. Um, you are not ridiculous. You are absolutely amazing. You're I amazing. am going to wait patiently for what you have next. See, I'm not going to say, I can't wait. I'm going to wait patiently. Good. I'm not going Because I don't have, I'm not taking on anything next. That is a, that's a mess. <laughs> yeah. Do you I'm hear saying, that? I'm saying no to everything. No to everything after this. It is well earned and well deserved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for doing I this. I love this talking to Back okay. to you, Amanda. Thank you so much, Shahrazad and Sydney. That was just so wonderful to have both of you together talking about the work and the relationships between women and these portraits in the exhibition. Now there are two special happenings as part of this virtual reception. We will unveil the new mural that Sydney has completed that is appearing on campus. But before that, we are really excited to premiere a short film that Sydney has produced documenting her project, Girl with the D Earring. You might have seen it if you've driven on East Grand Boulevard lately. The film was produced by Sydney G. James, directed by Lamar Landers, with music by Dame Crawford. And now, lights, camera, action.
what it's going to be when people are seeing when it's all done. So, um, it would be the girl with the D earring. As you can see, <laughs> I'm wearing them. Um, it's, it's the pink, it's a pink colored Old English D and it's an earring. And it's based off of Vermeer's paper. Well, it's a play on Vermeer's painting, the girl with the girl earring. Let's talk about this, this eyeball y'all done just put up there. This realistic eyeball. That he just put up there. Like, my God. Let's talk about that. He's about to just go by and fuck it. I don't care. I'll just put some brush on it. Oh, you don't know that. Huh? Okay. I can face it. But this is my largest, so yeah, okay. when it was a different, you know, I didn't realize. But this is what I called the team I got. Okay, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they gonna give me some other shit. That's what needs to be done. That right there, leave it alone. If you want to soften it up later, that's fine. And that's like, and that's if we have time. I I am not mad at that phone. Are you mad at how hard that phone? That's like a curtain. What no pole? On the, the blue? Yeah. Up top? Or? Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Your style is right. Get it with that dark color okay. and then chop into it with a lighter tone to, right. to define shit. Yeah. But other than that, let. When it gets dark in those areas, let it be suggestive. Because once we get to where we start highlighting that D, the darker it is around the D, right. the boy glows, right. and then just like a little small, like wherever that light's gonna hit, small little highlights on there and shit, okay. and bam, okay. good to go. I'm sorry, my name is Kevin, I'm very embarrassed. I just stopped by here realistically to see this beautiful mural, and it's fantastic. Uh, Sydney James, I didn't know her, but now I do. Fantastic woman. I stopped because I saw the legendary Red Jazz Shoe Shine Parlor. And I painted that, I don't know, man, about 10 or 15 years ago when it was down there on uh, Oakland Boulevard and Owens, and it was open. Red was still alive. He stayed a little further down, and his, uh, his nephew had me come in here and paint it. We did that. I painted the south of the building as well. That's really all she wrote, you know. I get some dressed 
and it looks just like it did when I painted it down there. And someone, especially this Miss Sydney James, is taking care of the business and keeping the legacy alive to a degree. This is fantastic, and I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> so you guys take real good care of yourself, stay safe, and enjoy yourself. All right, let me get like a part of the day project. Yeah. Because I think no matter how we do it, it's going to be time consuming. It's four colors. Three of them are going to need cleanup, and most of them are going to need tape off. Right. Because uh, it's not, you can't really get a spray cut. No, I wish you could. Yeah, yeah. that is fucking sweet. If we were to put a black outline between each of them, we'd be clean as shit. Okay. Is this, if this you want to do that? Through that thing. Oh, take a Montana black can, we clean it. No, 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 no. Yeah, really. Right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Cap. This your design. We ain't got to be yeah. slave to it. Yeah. All right. All right. And I yeah. know a quick yeah. call. Yeah. It's called the girl with the pearl in. It's simple, right? It's quiet. It's a portrait. So, we're in Detroit. I got assigned to do this wall. And I wanted to make it iconic for the area and iconic for the city, but I also wanted to make it beautiful. I always paint black women. Um, I really don't paint any much else. Um, this is a woman who was born and raised in the neighborhood, so it was a, you know, a perfect model to have. And I put her in the same position, but I put a little fuck on it. The reason why I have so many colors that you see how it's the neon colors about to get, you know. So, in this building, the title of the building is Chroma, and Chroma means color, like saturated color. So I got my subtle painting, but I'm putting the saturated color and then her her earring will glow. Look up. Do the crap. There you go. <laughs> The Chroma Building Mirror Press, and yeah. yeah. Oh yes, you do have. What what shoes are these? What are these called? They're, they're party shoes. Okay. Well, who is this young lady next to you? Can you tell me about her? Who am I? Ajena. Yep. <laughs> Tell me about something about this last day. Well, I am just hoping that everything goes well and smoothly, swiftly, uh, <laughs> you know, so we could get some rest. Ain't that beautiful? Oh my God, that is so, oh God, I can't wait till it gets finished. It's going to be nice. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. I'm finally finished. I present to you the girl with the D earring. I am so proud of this piece and I am exhausted. <laughs> but I feel like it was the whole process, good, bad, medium, was 
was all worth it in the ends because now we have this beauty. And uh, I'm thankful. put some use to that pose. I ain't It's just amazing to watch that video. Thank you. Know? you. I'm it's excited so to finally, you know, put it out there in these in this world, you know? I think what's so great for me, like spending time with your work in the gallery and then um driving to the mural and standing in front of it, there it was really when I saw this video that I I came to understand um how the whole neighborhood was engaged how children and families and everybody gathered. And I, I, I wonder if you could talk more about that because to me that just seems so clear from watching the video. It was, it, it was actually everything that you described. Like it was my family, my family's family. Like the city really showed out. Like it showed out. And because you never see, the only time you see black people ever projected that largely whether it's an ad or a mural or whatever you don't see us that large unless we're athletes or actors or you know of some grander importance level of importance but you never see us like you never see us like that so i i feel like it was it was a moment for everybody i i don't care if they were light dark fat skinny it was women and children that looks like me up there. Oh, that's me up there. Because it is. It's all of us. I had a great team to put it together to help me put to make it happen. And it had so much PR 
surrounding it, like the people came out and they showed like one woman even stopped. Um, she was in, she had tears in her eyes. She had yeah. been in the house for 129 days and she saw me on the news and she saw what it was on the news. And she said, I, she said the peace brought her out of the house. It was a lot. And that was like a common story. Well, you know, one, you're so empowering up there yourself and doing the work. Uh, but also, like, to me, the, the greatest thing about art in the street is the way that it activates space. You feel like it leaves the wall and, and it really becomes about real life. And yeah. that's also just so clear in the video with with children looking up at this and the you know clearly that connection that they have to this beautiful woman on the wall you know it's amazing and that's my friend but yeah so yeah. Diego Rivera was a strong believer that art was for the people of the people and I feel like the the movie that we produce is a is is a clear example of that. Yeah, absolutely. And so. all the all the work behind it too, how everybody comes together. Yeah, um, I'd like to use this moment uh, just to transition to uh, also this fantastic mural that you've created uh, on the University of Michigan campus. This is part of your residency and it's in the Modern Languages building. And for people who aren't familiar with that particular building, you know, it's a building where lots of students at all different levels faculty staff come in of that of that building it's very diverse really international um so to have this mural that you've made in the lobby of that building and think about people engaging with it uh as they come and go you know i think is is really uh impactful um thank you tell us a little bit more about uh, the concept behind the, the mural. And I also want you to talk specifically about the title, which is uh, Sarah, whatever she chooses to be, er. Red sees her. Yep. Yeah, tell us more yeah. about that. Um, so that is um, my play on Rosie the Riveter. It's um, a similar composition to Norma Rockwell's um, Rosie the River, because I do that often in my work, um, especially my public works. I try to appeal to something familiar that the audience might already be familiar with in some type of way. So I have a young woman sitting on a, I actually don't show what she's sitting on, but in the Rockwell painting, it's like a stack of books. I actually have her holding books. Um, and she's sitting up there, she's wearing a harness and lanyard, the yellow one that I wear when I, when I work properly. Uh, on the smaller walls, I tend not to wear them, but on the larger walls, you have to wear them or you're just dumb. And I'm not dumb, so I wear them. Um, and instead of like the regular U U.S. flag, I have the that flag painted in monochromatically in different shades of gray. Because to me, that that truly is like a representation. If we're, we really want to represent diversity and all of that, okay, let's show the full gambit, you know? And I don't have, it's, I think I only painted like maybe three or four stars because I, w I didn't want to be so specific to the flag. But because if you think about it, those were like the stars were the original colonizers. You know what I mean? Right, right. So I didn't want to give too much weight to the original flag. So I kind of designed my own flag. But she's sitting there, she's doing whatever. She's enjoying her day. And it's beautiful because how I painted her, I had the light source coming from the window because she's looking towards the window and it just happens to be that the window's right there and when the sun shines in it looks like I didn't do it on purpose at all it right. actually looks like God is doing it <laughs> I just but it's how I painted her I mean God did do it but he did it through me so there's that but I and it's titled whatever she wants to be because a she's only 14 but and we don't know what she wants to be yet but it's also we can do or be whatever we want. It's crazy that in 2020 that we still have to tell that to little girls that they aren't already aren't sold that at birth. We still have to work to even give that message that you know you could do whatever you want to do, right? You just got to work. Like, whatever you want to do just takes work. So yeah. do the work. So uh, she's sitting there and she's contemplating her day. She's holding her mask. So that's a sign of the times. 
And she might be thinking about, well, maybe I don't want to be an artist today. She's holding books. She's holding a book that I've had since I was nine years old that was gifted to me, but my mm -hmm. aunt Kathy, and because somebody online like asked me, oh, oh, I see you're a Virginia Hamilton fan because that's the author of the book. I was like, oh, that's I'm glad that people were actually were paying attention, like zoomed in, like what is she reading? They were like, what mm -hmm. is that about? It's nothing really deep to the piece. It's just really something personal to me. So yeah. it's just a little, another little doop doop doop. Yeah. I think that the mural and your show, you bring up something, which is they're so personal on one level. We get this kind of inside look or connection to you, but then they become so much about the all the people that you come in contact that, you mm -hmm. know, nurture you, that uh, your friends, your family, you know, community, the Yep. the work that you want to do for other people. So both this mural and also all of the images in the in the exhibition, this kind of duality where they're about you and then about everyone that comes into our lives and these relationships we have and and that, you know, uh, uh, solar system right. that lights up because of these relationships. Uh, that just really, really comes to my mind when I look at your work in its entirety all these, all these portraits together. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's just fantastic. Um, well, I want to encourage people to take advantage of this marvelous opportunity. But well, because go see the show. Yeah, go see the show. And it's really different because uh, due to uh, limitations on inside space. All of Sydney's uh, images and paintings will actually be public facing along Washington and Thayer in the gallery, in the windows of the Institute for the Humanities. So it's really this fantastic street side celebration of these amazing women and their relationships and the artist Sydney G. James. So please join us. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Shahrazad. Hope to see thank, you guys soon. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>